So hello and welcome to another video from sickmaths.co.uk where you can find the whole of GCSE Maths Explained on video all for free and find some amazing revision notes there as well, do check that out as well. Anyway, so this video is about similar and congruent triangles. These are similar triangles, these are congruent triangles. Similar triangles are triangles that look similar but aren't quite the same. So you can see one is an enlargement of the other or one's a shrunk version of the other. Different ways of looking at it. Okay, Ex You can see everything looks exactly the same except for the sizes. And congruent triangles are exactly the same. Maybe one's just turned on its side or something like this one is turned on its side compared to that, isn't it? This angle is equal to this angle. But otherwise, um, they have three sides that are the same. This side is equal to that side, that side is equal to that one, and this one is equal to that one. So they're congruent. Okay. So these letters simply tell you uh, or remind you how to work out if or, or prove if a triangle is similar or congruent. Now to prove something is similar, all three angles in the triangle must be the same. Well, I've only got two A's here, which means t you only have to show two angles are the same. But that's not a contradiction, because by the time you've shown two angles are the same, for example, you've shown these two are the same as these two, Okay, that means the third angle must be the same as well. Because say these were uh, add up to 100, then so these two would also add up to 100. That means the last angles must... Uh, be 80 each because tri tr um, angles in a triangle always add up to 180 degrees. So, so basically, only you need to show two angles are the same. Now, for congruent triangles, you do need to show three things, but you must show that at least one side is the same length because otherwise, say you just show that three angles are the same, the triangles could be similar but not congruent. But in congruent triangles, the sizes are the same as well. So you have to show at least one length or one side has the same length. Okay. So um, any combination of three things, as long as you've got one S in there, one length or one side is the same. So one side and two angles could be the same. So one side okay, and two angles. So these two and these two. Yeah. Or some other combination, so two sides, this side and this side are the same, this side and that side are the same, and then you just show that one pair of angles are the same. Obviously, in this description I'm showing you everything's the same, but uh, when you come to proving it, that's all you need to show. Three things, including one side. Now, there are actually two different types of questions, one for similar triangles and one for congruent triangles. Similar one, similar triangle type questions in the exam, uh, for GCSE of course, um, basically ask you to work out the length of a missing side by comparing the triangles and these questions I want you to show or prove that a triangle is congruent okay or maybe based on the fact that the triangles are congruent you might have to find a missing angle or something but basically they're like this kind of question Right, um, so find a missing side in similar triangles. Well, first of all, you've got this simple situation. Once you've got this idea, you can do the other two anyway, very quickly. Uh, you can see that one is an enlargement of the other. Okay, so that means there's something called a scale factor between the two triangles. Hopefully you understand what scale factor is, but I'll tell you very quickly. It's a number you have to times the length by to get to the other uh, triangle. So you have to times this length by a certain number to get to this length. And that same number, that same scale factor, will get you from this length times by that scale factor will give you this number. Okay, and the reverse is true. So if I got a scale factor from here to there, the scale factor, that same number, so same scale factor will get you from here to there. I'll show you what I mean. So 15 times my scale factor k will equal 10. And k is your typical letter to use for this topic. So 15 times k equals 10. So the scale factor is 10 over 15 just rearranging, which simplifies to two-thirds. So, k, as I say, K is a typical letter to use for proportions, basically. 
You'll see that in another in other proportion type videos on my website sigmath.co.uk. Anyway, so my scale factor is two thirds to get from here to there. That means I have to do six times two thirds to get from six to x, which is what I'm trying to work out. Okay, and notice I've got the scale factor from here to here because I know I've got this information which can get me this information. And notice also I'm comparing corresponding sides. So this side corresponds to this side, this corresponds to this side, this is the shortest side, this is the shortest side of that triangle. Okay, so anyway, 6 times my 2 thirds should equal x, which is simply 4. So the length of x is 4. So, and that's it. That's how a similar triangle question goes. The other questions are basically hidden versions of this question. For example, you've got a triangle here which is actually hiding a second triangle inside. Not very well, it's not exactly hard to spot, is it? Okay, so you've got a small triangle, 4 by 6 there, 4 and 6 there, and the big triangle is 5, 4 plus 1, 5, and this length is 6 plus x over here. So you've got your two triangles, and then you do the same work as we did before. We want to work out this side, so we want to do a scale factor from here to there, so that eventually we can do 6 times something equals that thing here, 6 plus x. So, but before we do that, we have to work out the scale factor, so we have to look for a pair of sides we do know, so we know 4 and 5. So, 4 times what makes 5, 4 times what makes 5, rearranging, gives you k equals 5 over 4. So, that's my scale factor, 5 over 4, and then therefore I do simply do 6 times 5 over 4, so 6 times 5 over 4 equals 6 plus x. To get from here to there, that's what you do. Just uh, rearranging this equation will give you x equals 1.5. I haven't um, uh, gone into the details of how to work out this equation because that's another topic. Yeah. So go to um, videos on equations, basic equations or not so basic equations on my website and you'll know how to do that, hopefully. Now, third example, again, just a hidden version of this. We've got um, two triangles between parallel sides and if you have this situation you'll know and if you know about parallel sides from my videos on sigmas.co.uk this angle is equal to this, this angle is equal to this and this angle is equal to this and that is important because you then realize that if this angle is equal to this that means you have to spin it round to really compare them and of course you need to compare them to uh, compare the corresponding sides. You don't want to say a scale factor between this side and this side you want a scale factor between this side and this side and if you didn't know you have to spin it round you might compare them wrongly yeah so anyway now I know that these two tr these two triangles to compare them I need to draw them like this I can obviously see the scale factor from here to there is simply 2 1 times 2 is 2 so the scale factor is 2 k is equal to 2 therefore 3 times 2 should equal y which is 6 basically so anyway you've worked out the length of y and that's similar triangle questions done let's do our little proof for congruent triangles and this is very typical in many ways okay and I'm going to show you typical tricks that come with this question so um, you got an equilateral triangle you're told that okay and somehow you have to show that either a side and two angles are the same between these two triangles here or two sides and an angle or all three sides in these two triangles are the same so if you can't see cl or understand this notation BDA um, and CDA BDA is BDA that's one triangle and CDA CDA is another triangle you can see by measure um, naming the corners you've effectively drawn a triangle yeah CDA and you can go round again back to where you started and you've got two triangles but are they congruent well look at our little tricks here since we know that these triangles are equilateral you know this length is equal to this length so AC is equal to AB AC is equal to AB that's one thing ticked one side as it says in this. Um, and here is a very common trick you can use AD equals AD that sounds strange obviously AD is equal to AD but that's important for the proof because these two triangles share this one side so by saying AD is equal to AD that means there is another side 
that is the same length in both triangles. Okay, so a bit strange, but that's what we need. And uh, finally, ABD is equal to ACD as the equilateral. So ABD stands for an angle. ABD is equal to A. C D. So this angle is equal to this angle, as you can see from the double marks, that's how you show two angles are the same. Anyway, and as is equilateral because um all angles in triangles add up uh, sorry, are sorry, let's start again. Every angle in an equilateral triangle is sixty degrees. So that's sixty degrees and that's sixty degrees. So that's it really. And um, since you've shown that two sides and an angle are the same, therefore it's congruent. Now you should say, this is a shorthand way of writing it, you should really say that um, AC equals AB is equilateral, therefore one side the same. Then AD equals AD, therefore another side the same. And blah blah blah, blah blah, therefore another angle is the same, and therefore congruent. So instead of just writing SSA, you should actually maybe write a very short sentence. Yeah, and that is it.